Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another Jamesy Tech YouTube video. In this video, I'm going to be going over if the Security Plus is enough to get you a job in cybersecurity in 2024. I'm going to be going over a little bit about the Security Plus, um, saying the pros and cons of having the Security Plus and if it's actually enough to get you a job in cybersecurity. So yeah, guys, before we get into it, I'm going to link my Discord, jamesy.live slash Discord. I'm building a community of people who are taking certifications, trying to get into IT, trying to get into cybersecurity to build up a community of people, help them out, have, every, have everyone else help each other out and just create a nice community of people in IT. And yeah, also, if you are new, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe. If you do enjoy these videos, over 95% of you guys are not subscribed. So if you haven't already, please do so. So the Security Plus is an entry-level cybersecurity certification by CompTIA. It has been around since 2002. It's been around for a relatively long time. Over 700,000 people have this certification, which will come up later. Um, so 700,000 people have taken this test and passed it and obtained that credential. Um, but pretty much the Security Plus will teach you the basics of cybersecurity. And it's definitely um, a very, like probably the most popular cybersecurity certification um, as far as I can uh, tell, at least entry level. So first we're going to go in uh, to what people actually look for when they're looking at their candidates applying for these cybersecurity entry level positions. First, I'm going to go with IT experience. A lot of the time, uh, cybersecurity positions will ask for some IT experience because cybersecurity itself is not an entry level field. You don't just go in off the rip into cybersecurity fresh out of college, high school, whatever it is. Usually some people can um, if you're very lucky, but for most people, generally they want you to have some ex IT experience because it's kind of hard to give somebody um, access to all these this information and be able to secure all this uh, intellectual property uh, user data things like that without having some experience knowing what they're actually protecting um, it teaches you how to use a computer how to troubleshoot computers and that all ties into security you have to know the ins and outs of computers to at least know how to secure them so that's something that they look for um, but both lab and uh, professional experience in it um, if you haven't had any IT experience, definitely do some labs, create your own home lab. Um, maybe mess with some networking devices and secure them, like things like that. Um, lab experience, you can also build like an Active Directory dom uh, domain with virtual machines, things like that. You can do Try Hack Me, Hack the Box uh, for those types of labs. Um, those are more cybersecurity catered, um, at least Hack the Box. Try Hack Me probably has some IT things as well. But those are some to look into if you don't have any professional experience, but you want to get some lab experience. Um, they also look for some entry level certifications, which is where the Security Plus comes in. Security Plus is in a lot of the job descriptions. So you may see this certification everywhere and people will call this the baseline certification um, to get in for cybersecurity. Some IT jobs actually ask for the certification. Another thing I would like to bring is programming experience. A lot of people miss this and don't think this is a real thing, but cybersecurity has a lot of programming, not a lot, but definitely some programming involved. In a lot of cybersecurity roles, you'll be asked to read code because um, code is can be pretty insecure if you don't follow best practices and do certain things like plain text passwords inside of code. But you definitely wanna learn some logic and uh, some coding before you get into cybersecurity, at least know how to read it. A uh, one I would suggest is Python's a big one for cybersecurity experts, because you can do a lot of automation with Python. That's another reason why they may ask for programming experience, at least scripting, um, maybe not like application programming, but scripting is pretty important, whether that's like Bash, PowerShell, Python, um, but automation in cybersecurity is definitely a plus, even if the company doesn't ask for it. If you know how to automate things, you're going to go up in the world, in my opinion. The last thing I must say, this isn't as important, but it definitely is important for uh, cybersecurity is some soft skills, knowing how to communicate, communicate professionally, um, being able to, to uh, present yourself in a nice manner. I know in IT, a lot of people don't have soft skills. So I'm just throwing that out there. You should definitely learn how to talk to people how to communicate effectively, write emails, things like that, uh, because that can go a long way, especially with the interview process, because some people might get the interview, but they screw up the interview because they don't know how to talk to them, don't know how to communicate their skills properly. So soft skills are pretty important for at least getting the job. Now here's some benefits of having the Security Plus is you learn the basics of cybersecurity. This is, like I said, this is pretty much a baseline certification. Um, there are some competitors nowadays, but um, a while ago, this is definitely the baseline certification. The Google cybersecurity certification is something that pretty much matches this uh, coursework. It also has some programming put into it. So I'd recommend um, Google cybersecurity for some people. It teaches you the basics and some programming. 
Another big benefit, which is why a lot of people definitely take the certification, is that it's recognized by the Department of Defense. Um, I think it's uh, 8570 is the, uh, the code that this is under. If you have this certification, you could actually work for government um, government companies. Uh, for example, if you want to work for the federal government, they might require this certification or another security certification to get in the door there. So that's why a lot of people definitely take this is you can get government jobs with a security plus. Um, that's a definitely a big benefit. Another benefit is it's relatively easy to uh, study for and easy to take. A lot of people pass this certification. Um, after taking basic uh, IT experience and networking. That's another thing. A lot of people do like to do IT related certifications before doing cybersecurity. Because like I said before, it's hard to understand what you're securing if you don't know what you're actually like securing. Like for example, knowing what a firewall is, switch, switches, routers, computers, servers, all this. You need to know what that is in order to secure it. So um, doing some IT certifications before the Security Plus is definitely important if not afterwards as well. Now here's some of the cons of having the Security Plus or at least only having the Security Plus. Obviously the Security Plus will help you a lot in getting a job, but just having it alone and saying, I'm gonna get a job because I got my Security Plus. That is not the way to think at all because that is just not the case at all. Because like I said before, 700,000 people have this certification. So those jobs on LinkedIn that you're looking at or in Indeed, and they say, hey, you need a security plus. You're applying to those and a thousand other people with their security plus and more certifications are also applying for those jobs. So that's something you have to think about. You are against every other person applying for this job. So just having the security plus, no lab experience, no professional experience is very hard to get into cybersecurity. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, and once I, like I said before, cybersecurity is not an entry level field. My biggest advice for people is to get an IT job, a low level IT help desk job to start out, maybe move up to a networking role, something like that data center role. And then once you're at that point and you have your security plus, then you could definitely move into security or at least have a way easier way to move yourself in that field. And alongside, you're going to learn a lot of things in IT um, that will help you while you do security. Cause a lot of IT jobs actually have security in them. Um, in my IT internship, I've done a lot of cybersecurity projects and cybersecurity uh, disciplines. So I definitely can see how people go into IT and easily transfer into cybersecurity. And the last thing I'm gonna throw out here is sadly, nowadays it is almost expected to have professional experience. So um, people can cram and take the exam. That's the thing with the Security Plus. If you take a week to study for it and you, know all, and you, do, and you cram all this knowledge into your brain, you take the test, you pass, what do you get out of it? You know what I mean? And a lot of employers are starting to see that. Um, if you don't, uh, What's the word? If you don't keep that knowledge after you take the exam, that's not going to help you. There's no point in even almost taking the exam if you're not learning anything for it. If you learn and you can build on it and do lab lab stuff and in the actual IT field, apply some of the things that you've learned from the Security Plus, that's going to go a long way. If you go to the interview and you don't know the basic uh, cybersecurity like words or concepts, protocols, you know, basic securing uh, like network devices, things like that, you're going to have a lot of trouble trying to find a job if you just crammed for this exam in like a week or two and you don't maintain any of that knowledge. Of course, you're going to forget some stuff, but once you take the exam and you maintain some of the knowledge and you practice it, it's going to come back to you relatively easily. Now, lastly, my advice uh, moving forward, once you got your Security Plus, learn some basic scripting and uh, programming. I said that earlier. Play with PowerShell because that's on Windows devices. Uh, Bash is for Linux. Um, you could try that out. You could do uh, automating. Like, for example, you can do like scheduled tasks with Bash scripting in Linux. That's definitely fun. I do it on my home lab. Um, another thing is Python. You can write basic coding applications like a calculator on Python or, or basic games on Python just to learn how to code and um, do it effectively. Knowing what a for, for loop is and the strings and booleans, floats, ints, all that stuff. Uh, knowing what you're actually looking at when you're in the field is pretty important. And it also is really good to leverage that in um, getting a cybersecurity role because a lot of cybersecurity jobs will have a uh, sort of niche You'll have application cybersecurity, or you'll have a cybersecurity analyst, or you'll have penetration testing, which that's like breaking in the stuff. So cybersecurity, like the security plus is very broad, but cybersecurity positions usually go into a more deeper, more specific discipline. So getting another certification or at least experience 
doing other things other than just the baseline certification will help you get the more specific jobs. Even if it's not in the field that you're studying, it definitely shows that you have the ability to learn more and you actually have some skills already. I already said this before, get an IT job first before you do cybersecurity, unless you're doing like a, a career uh, transition maybe. Um, it depends on what career you're in. Maybe if you're doing like criminal justice, cybersecurity is not a bad option because you can get into like cyber, cyber law, governance. Um, and if you're getting interviews and you're not hearing back afterwards, like if you're actually getting the interview, you go for it. You're not hearing back. You need to improve your soft skills. In my opinion, a lot of the interviews actually how you're able to communicate because they're interviewing you, seeing if you're able to join their team and work with them. So being able to communicate effectively is going to go a long way. So yeah, that is all I have for this video. Um, I say it's definitely can be enough to get you a job, but you do, do need to do more in order to get that job. So thank you guys for watching. This is James E Tech. Make sure to like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed. Do, join the Discord down below if you're interested. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.